The African American Legend series highlights the accomplishments of blacks in areas as varied as politics, sports, aviation, business, literature, and religion. We will explore how African Americans have succeeded in areas where they had been previously excluded because of segregation, racism, and lack of opportunity. I'm your host, Dr. Roscoe C. Brown, Jr., and with us today is Reverend Herbert Daughtry, pastor of the House of the Lord Church, longtime advocate for everything good in the black community. Thank Herb. you. Thank you. And longtime friend and a great admirer of yours. Thank you, Herbie. Right. Um, you know, recently you have returned from Chad, yes. looking at the situation before. Yes. Tell us about the trip, the circumstances, what you found, what the response of the Sudanese government was, what the response of the black Sudanese was. Right. We became interested in the situation uh, as it relates to the Darfurian people. About three years ago, Councilman Charles Barron and I did a civil disobedience and met with the ambassador. He told us that things were the improving. The ambassador from Sudan. From Sudan. Madness was his name, and that uh, things were improving, and uh, so we kind of left off. But then, as well, what, we were, is, what was his criterion for improvement? Well, he said that uh, they were going to allow humanitarian access. Uh, they were in uh, negotiation with the UN and with the AU, African Union. Uh, as it relates to the hybrid uh, mixed uh, peacekeeping force, and uh, that they were in communication with the Darfurian leadership. So we stepped away, but then things escalated, and um, uh, about eight months ago, we pulled together what we call the National Religious Leaders of African Ancestry Concern about Darfur. We wanted to awaken and enlighten our people as to the situation. As you know, the UN called it the worst humanitarian crisis in the world today. Some people estimate over 400,000 people have been killed since 2003. Two and a half million people have been displaced. For those in the audience who are not really truly up to date on this, mm -hmm. what really is the nature of the humanitarian crisis now? Well, two and a half million people displaced. Uh, uh, Over the, to other parts other of parts Africa, of Chad. Africa, and, Chad uh, particularly Chad yeah. has been a heavy burden. The Central Republic of Africa is bearing a heavy burden and, uh, and moving around in the Sudan because um, uh, what gives rise to it is, uh, according to the reports that I had, um, read, and then I talk with people in the refugee camps, I talk to people in the bush, uh, I talk with people from one end of Chad to the other, uh, is that the Sudanese government, uh, very much involved, bombed uh, these villages and then uh, sent in the heavy equipment. Then came the Janjaweens, as they are called. These are Arabs on horsebacks, and Janjaween meaning evil on horseback. They come in, they loot, they rape, uh, and then they occupy these villages. Uh, I, I was told by um, the women, uh, particularly one woman I can see her just as vividly, that her husband was killed before very eyes. And, and that uh, the babies, some of the babies were smashed in the ground. I was told by one of the young female soldiers, and I asked her, why are you out here in camouflaged uniform and with a weapon on your back? She said, well, the uh, Januine uh, raped my sisters, raped my mother, and destroyed the village where I used to live. This was the testimony consistent throughout, whether you talk to uh, Darfurian leaders, which I had the privilege of uh, talking to the uh, leaders of the Sudan uh, Liberation Army with Jan, that is Justice and Equality Movement. I talked with them in the bush, in fact. I now, went, to, uh, to put this in perspective, the Sudanese government, mm -hmm. which is primarily controlled by people of uh, Islamic descent, yeah, Arabs. Yeah, Arabs. Arab and, 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 and yeah, and as in the, and most Muslims, yes. And they were they are displacing black Sudanese who are not Muslim. Uh, no, almost. They are displacing uh, Darfurians who are Sudanese too, but and Muslims. Mm -hmm. So it's not, uh, and that's a. I'm glad you raised the point because it's not a religious uh, situation. The Sudanese government, as ruled by El Bashir, came to power, I think, in 1989, and instituted uh, Islamization. Uh, instituted what? In Islamization. Oh, okay. Bringing Islam, in the yes, Sharia laws. Islam. That's mm -hmm. right. And, and in fact, 
began to uh, attack the south of, of Sudan. Sudan is divided into five areas as benefited the British. So in the south, where you had a significant um, Christian population, they invaded the south, and for 21 years they had this battle. Finally, under the leadership of a man named John Granger, uh, after 21 years, succeeded in winning um, a concession with, from the Sudanese government in which the president, the South would have its own president, and after mm -hmm. 2011, they would have a plebiscite. So now they turn to Darfur, which is the western part of Sudan, which is indigenous African, and which is Muslim. Uh, and began to uh, attack them and to drive them to the, to the villages. Now, according to the people to whom I spoke, the root cause is Arab expansionism. I don't, I, I don't want to be overly generalized on this. I, I want to say that Arab elitist mm -hmm. leadership attempt at expansion, but I think that's a more Which has an economic root, no doubt. Yeah, there's oil, an oil and other mm -hmm. minerals um, involved and, and land. So as the indigenous African population has moved out, then the Arabs are brought in and to people the area. So the, the, it is significant to note, as the leadership told me and in the bush, I, I should say I went at a very important time, I didn't choose the time, providential, I think, in that Silver Care, who was the president of the South, had called an emergency meeting of all of the parties involved. Uh, the representatives from Eritrea, Libya, Morocco, Egypt, Chad, Central Republic, Ethiopia, because um, Sudan, the largest country, country in Africa, is bordered by nine different countries. Mm -hmm. In addition to these uh, governmental representatives, also the Darfurian leadership. So I had a chance to talk with Silver Kerr, I had care. I had a chance to meet with some of the other leaders. And then when I went south or east in Abidjan, the, the armies had come in for these high-level meetings. They were allowed to come in, bring part of their, their armies with them. And I was privileged to meet with them in their various uh, in safe camp. quarters, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, got some great footage. I encouraged them to go on tape, on record, as to the, their position. Their position, as I've stated, is that um, it is a Arab expansionism, elitist Arab expansionism, and an attempt at Arabism. The, in, the, the imposition of Arab culture, the imposition of the uh, Arab as a language. So they, they therefore resisted. 2003, they started seriously uh, battling against the Sudanese government. Now, oh, uh, uh, we visited Gaga. Gaga is about 17,000 populated. It's about 30, 40 miles from Abidjan, which is a, which is the border on to on uh, Sudan. We talked to women, as I pointed out to you. Uh, one of the vivid memories we have is the, is the women who were fighting over water. Uh, each family gets four gallons of water a day. And so they wait all day long. And, and when the water run out, they don't have sufficient water. Uh, then they started, the, the tension emerges. And the, and the difficulty is the geologist says that unless the, ra the water is rationed, it's going to run out, which means you create the most serious problem. So here you have a camp, and this is a smaller camp, 17,000 people, insufficient medical attention, um, insufficient water supply, insufficient food. Um, th 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 there is the obvious um, deformity in body deformities, disease, and the people are steady coming in. And, and, then, and then you ask, you say, now, what did these people do to deserve this? Okay, the Sudanese government say that the number is grossly exaggerated. They didn't kill all that many people, maybe 9,000. You know, it sounds like the, the, the argument Giuliani used to make about New York City Police Department. New York City Police Department is the finest in the world. After all, Detroit kills more black people yeah, than right. we do. <laughs> you know, Detroit kills 100 black people. We only kill 50. So it's kind of like the El Bashir is saying, we only killed 9,000. But even if you take his number, 
Why, why do it at all? Well, I do it at all. What did these people do to be driven from their land? And, and so from their side, the argument is, I mean, the position is, listen, if you can believe over 800 mile period uh, 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 geography over which I travel and talk to governmental officials, civic leaders, people in the, in the refugee camp, people in the bush all over, the stories were always consistent. Uh, the government came with planes. In fact, recently, front page New York article several weeks ago uh, had these pictures of the Sudanese government planes being painted with the UN mm -hmm. sign and the Food for um, the World Food Project signs, cutting in weaponry. On, you know, so they were disguising the planes. Uh, and so the people said, well, the planes came in and, and bombed, and then the government supported these Janjaweens. And uh, they killed, they raped, they destroyed the villages. Now, either people got together and made this lie up over all this mileage and, this, and, and said to, to reinforce this, 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 this lie, we'll leave our homes where we have been yeah, for hundreds right. of years mm -hmm. and live in these uh, squalid, um, uh, depraved, deprived um, refugee camps. Now, if you want to believe that, if anybody can believe that, they can. If you, if you, if you reject that, then uh, you have to say, uh, or if you accept that mm -hmm. people's story, then something has to be done. Something has to be done. Yeah. And, and I know you and many advocates have been mm -hmm. talking about this. One of the reasons some people feel that this isn't being dealt with is because they're black Africans. Right. They're folks like us. Yes. Uh, you, your group is a religious group. Yes. Uh, there are several other groups that are interested in Darfur. Right. What do you think the best strategy is to help end this crisis? Right. Well, we take a, 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 a two major prone approach. Number one is humanitarian. We have launched our uh, yeah, food and medical care, care, right. care, and we are doing that. We will be going in June with a 40-foot container. The other is advocacy. Meaning that uh, now the, the U.S. government, which has been the strongest government on this issue, has what they call Plan B in in abeyance. They go into Plan B means they're going to do a no-fly zone, meaning that they're going to put more uh, restriction on personal travel. They're going to increase the number of corporations that they're going to um, they persuade to uh, disinvest. Th that's right, to, to, to divest, and um, uh, they're going to put additional um, what might be called moral pressure on on the uh, Sudanese government. So the the that's that's the U.S. position. That's the strongest position uh, on a military side, a peacekeeping side. The UN has called for 22,500 uh, peacekeeping people. Uh, the AU has supplied 7,000, which was obviously in insufficient. So we believe that there need to be a greater peacekeeping force there, uh, and that the African countries need to uh, invest more, but surely uh, put more people on the ground there. Uh, the Sudanese government had ex has expressed um, reservations of having too many uh, outside troops well, there. Why? What is the basis of their reservation? They believe that uh, a part of the concern of the, uh, uh, for Darfur isn't about people being concerned for Africans because, let's face it, Africans are being killed all over the place, but that it is a U.S. Zionist, their words, Zionist uh, collaboration to take control of the oil, to get control of the land, that if their forces come in there, they're not going to leave. So, and then if they stay, then they want to get the hold of the oil and the other minerals, right? So they point to the fact that the largest groups in, in America that is yeah. really pushing the issue uh, emanates from the Jewish community. Uh, well, and, to and what the extent is there some possibility of truth in that? Well, it, it may be. Uh, let's face it, mm -hmm. it, it may be some truth there. Uh, obviously, the USA must have its own interests. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to believe they're driven by all altruistic purposes alone. Mm -hmm. uh, surely, surely w within the Jewish interest um, and, and, and tied to the international uh, continuing tension of mm -hmm. Arab, you know, Muslim, Jews, mm -hmm. etc. So, 
uh, it may be. The, the, the argument, put it this way, the argument uh, has some force to it because of contemporary history, uh, contem contemporary development and past history. Our position is, and that's one of the reasons that we formed and made it very clear, National Religious Leaders of African Ancestry. Right. Now, we have worked with rabbis. Mm -hmm. We have worked with imams. Uh, and I should point out, too, that in my conversation with the Darfurian leadership, the rebel leaders, mm -hmm. they were quite clear and very, very forceful in expressing gratitude mm -hmm. to the Jewish community mm -hmm. and to the U.S. government. They were disappointed almost to tears, and I was sitting on the rug, you know, t talking as this leader, Ibrahim of uh, Jan, was talking, and almost, almost a, a very emotionally, he was expressing regret and, and disappointment that he had not received support from the Muslim community, that no Arab nation had supported them, uh, the, the Muslim community had not supported them, and therefore the, the primary source of the support emanated from Christians, mm -hmm. Jews, the USA, and they were very, very grateful for that. Well, I this said, goes well, back to that uh, Islamicization of that region. Right. And that is one of the cultural forces that is driving this. Now, when you confront the Sudanese government about this, what is their rationale for doing what they're doing? Well, they claim that there is uh, some resistance. Uh, well, first of all, they claim, they used to claim, we had nothing to do with it. These militias are on their yeah. own, and we have not, not, we have not supported them. But when it uh, had been uh, demonstrated that they had been supporting them, well, it's because the people are resisting, and they had to put down. Resisting this uh, Islamization? Yeah, resisting, well, no, resisting the Janjaweed. They were resisting trying to get more power. They were resisting the Arabs, the Janjaweeds, oh. as they were um, invading their, their, their villages. And so they being uh, Arabs, uh, you know, Sudanese government is Arab in addition to being Muslim, so the Janjaweeds are Arabs in addition to being Muslims. So they felt, uh, at least according to the argument they put forward, that they had to, uh, in, they had to support these people. And they claim that there have been some injustices, as they say, 9,000 people have been killed, and uh, that has been their position. Now, what I say to people, I said, listen, the, the point is, number one, is the, the Darfur and leadership think the, the Jewish community, Christian community, uh, rabbis, imam, those that are supporting them, U.S. government, and we should understand that, because if, if, if you had a, a snake wrapped around your neck, choking the breath out of your body, <laughs> and somebody uh, uh, 10 yards away in safety uh, says uh, to you, don't let that person <laughs> help right. you yeah, right. because they want to get your money mm -hmm. out of your back pocket. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, your position would be, listen, I don't care what it is. They want to get out of my back pocket. If they propose it to help get this snake off my neck, exactly. I'll deal with whether or not they want my money or not. Mm -hmm. So people standing over there in safety saying, you know, be, uh, mm -hmm. be suspicious of the U.S. government, be suspicious of the Jews, be suspicious of the Christians, be suspicious mm -hmm. of all these white folks who want to help you. And the position is, listen, we need help. Now, what is the position of the U.N.? Yeah, the U.N., uh, in fact, good question, because just recently the U.N. has uh, indicated that there were about 50 persons that they have identified as being, as, as, that they want to charge with war crimes, mm -hmm. crimes against humanity. The ICC, the International uh, Criminal Court in Hague, uh, has identified at least two persons in the Sudanese government. Mm -hmm. The Sudanese government has said they will not give them up. I happen to have been on a walk, a 150-mile walk from Brussels, Belgium, to Hague, the Netherlands, uh, with that one of the objectives was to encourage the ICC to speed up the process. I didn't go all the way. I started and I returned. But we were pleased when um, the, 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 the ICC said that they would speed up the process, and they have. So the UN's position is that uh, it is a humanitarian crisis. They are uh, war crimes, crimes against humanity that have been committed, that these people should be brought to justice. The UN's position is that there need to be a sufficient peacekeeping force 
in Sudan. What about economic sanctions? Well, that, that is in the American plan, too. That's, that, that, they, I think that was number four, is that to, to uh, apply uh, vigorous economic sanctions across the board. In fact, what we have argued is that they, they were eager to do that against North Korea and other places, Iran and wherever else. Uh, so why not, why not uh, apply? What's the uh, argument against doing that? that you'll be hurting the people. You know, the same argument we had yeah, in doing apartheid do day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's not, let's, not, uh, let's not do this economic sanction against the apartheid regime. You'll be hurting the South But To what people. extent do you think they might work? Uh, I don't know uh, the nature of the economy other mm -hmm. than the oil and the, the minerals. Mm -hmm. If, for example, they boycotted Sudanese oil, mm -hmm. put a limit on the minerals. Right. Would that really have an effect on the Sudanese people, or would it just have an effect on the elites? Well, I think it would have, a, it would have an impact. Surely uh, it would have an impact. But the people that I know, including the leadership, the Darfurian leadership, is that they're already suffering. Mm -hmm. So well, it, I mean, not just the Deforians. What yeah. about the rest of the Sudanese people? Would yeah. it have an impact on them? Yes. The, uh, the idea behind political uh, economic pressure is to bring them to political pressure. That's right. So that you can say, well, look, you have to uh, do something about the cause of this. Right, right. To what extent, I know you probably didn't get a chance to talk to too many Sudanese who are not Deforians, right. but to what extent do you think the ordinary Sudanese citizen is aware of this and is concerned? I think from, uh, from the Sudanese Sudanese that I have talked to, both in this country and abroad, they are primarily supportive of the government. Why? Uh, but, well, because they, they are Muslims and they are Arabs, and they feel that the U.S. government is uh, flexing its muscle and that, again, it's a Jewish, you know, that the, 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 the U.S. and, and, and Jewish um, collaboration are trying to choke uh, their country to keep it from really developing. That's is the there that some I've feeling to. that if the Deforians had some freedom, that they would take over other parts of Sudan, or is it just a religious belief that some people have about spreading Islam? Well, I, 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 I'm not sure um, if, if um, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure to what extent they, that question is being raised. Mm -hmm. Uh, from the Darfurians that I talk to, all they want is to own homeland. They, they just want the freedom within the western part of Sudan and the, and, and, and the land question to be returned to their home. That was one Does of the reasons. Does that have an economic? If they had their own area, would mm -hmm. they have a sufficient economy to survive and have health care and food? I think so. And, and what they want, as I understand it, is, is not separation from the Sudanese government, but more cooperation, more empowerment. They feel marginalized now and driven out of their land. So what they want is to, is to have something similar to what is happening in the South. In the South, as I mentioned, um, John Granger was able to uh, win, win the concessions that the South has its own president. That president is vice president in the central government. And in 2011, the people will decide whether they want to be completely independent or to what extent they want to be a part of the central government. If they're completely independent, they will be an independent nation. That's right. That's now, right. Th that would seem to be the fear that the Sudanese government ha have about Defoe. They don't want another nation and that on their be, border, Yeah, and that, particularly another nation that may not be friendly both from a religious and an economic standpoint. And that is true. Yes, that now, is. Now, what can we in the African-American community here in the United States do? All right. N number one, on the humanitarian support side, uh, we were there. We took, I uh, had 700 T-shirts that we gave out, and they were grabbing, the children were grabbing, and one of the re requests the child, children were making, they said, next time you come, please bring us some shoes, mm -hmm. you know, and I looked across the, the camp, and everybody was bare feet, but, I mean, so have I, coming out of Georgia, you used to be bare feet all the time, but at least we knew there were shoes back home in mm -hmm. <laughs> the house, so I think there's a humanitarian support side. I think the advocacy uh, support, I think that all of us who have um, influence within government, 
no government officials has continued to talk to them, that the U.S. got to continue to take the leadership on this. It's a good cause, and they should continue to take the leadership on this. I, I think that we should continue to organize. One of the things that the Sudanese government um, uh, alarmed about, uh, and what makes our organizations important, is that they can't bring those allegations against us. Mm -hmm. They may be raping my grandmama over there. Mm -hmm. They may be killing my mm -hmm. uncle over there. So they, I understand, in the circle, in the governmental circles, have expressed profound concern that now the civil rights movement leaders were getting involved. That's one of the reasons that we did a civil disobedience on Martin Luther King Jr. birthday at the mm -hmm. Sudanese mission, because they know that uh, they can accuse us of an international conspiracy mm -hmm. or whatever, whatever. Well, clearly, as we come to the close of this very wonderful discussion about mm -hmm. the four, mm -hmm. the leadership of Reverend Herman Daughtry mm -hmm. and the many other advocates in the black religious community is very, mm -hmm. very important. Right. And clearly, is there any place where anyone could go to the internet to get more information about this yes you can uh, www dot h o l n j dot org that's okay, our we'll web. put that on the screen okay I want to thank Reverend Herbert Daughtry House of the Lord Church for talking about this crisis in the four today thanks very much Herb. right good thank you mm -hmm.